And just to wrap everything up, we have a really good uh, Redshift cheat sheet here. Definitely recommend you print this out for your exam. And we're going to go through everything again. So data can be loaded from S3, EMR, DynamoDB, or multiple data sources on remote hosts. Redshift is Colomer's, uh, Colomer's store database, uh, which can give you SQL-like queries and is, and is an OLAP. Redshift can handle petabytes worth of data. Redshift is for data warehousing. Redshift's most common use case is business intelligence. Redshift can only run in one AZ, so it's a sing it's single AZ, it's not multi-AZ. Redshift can run via a single node or multi-node for clusters. A single node is 160 uh, gigabytes in size. A multi-node is comp uh, comprised of a leader node and multiple compute nodes. You are billed per hour for each node, excluding the leader node in multi-node. You are not billed for the leader node. Just repeating that again there. You can have up to 128 compute nodes. And again, I said earlier that the maximum uh, by default was 32, but they're not going to ask you what the, the default is. Uh, Redshift has two kinds of node types, dense compute and dense storage. And it should be pretty obvious uh, when you should use one or the other. Redshift attempts to back, uh, uh, back up your data three times, the original on the compute node and on S3. Similar data is stored on a disk sequentially for faster reads. Redshift data, uh, database can be encrypted via KMS or Cloud HSM. Backup retention is default to one day and can be increased uh, to a maximum of 35 days. Uh, Redshift can asynchronously back up to your snap uh, to your uh, backup via a snapshot to another region delivered uh, via S3. And Redshift uses massively parallel processing to distribute queries and data across all loads. And in the case of an empty empty table, when importing uh, Redshift, will sample the data to create a a schema. So there you go. That's Redshift in a nutshell, uh, and that should help you uh, for the exams.